Hello everyone, in this video, let us do an interface walkthrough of Jira Core Server. So in this video, we will do an interface walkthrough. And before I proceed further with this video, I just want to remind you that in the previous video, we spent time discussing what is Jira Core. And that particular video was mostly focused on the introduction of this video series. So what are we going to discuss in this video? Well, in this video, we will be first taking a look at a use case, a marketing use case, because when you are trying to learn a new tool, it makes a lot sense when you have a problem to solve. So we will be using this use case of marketing uh, uh, or using Jira Core for marketing based projects. And then of course, we'll uh, take a look at uh, the tool itself. Uh, we'll do an interface walkthrough during the uh, demonstration. So let us spend some time uh, discussing the marketing use case. Well, we will be taking an example of uh, Foodie, which is uh, an online food delivery service or uh, a platform that we have been building. If you watch my other videos on uh, portfolio for Jira or I should say advanced roadmaps for Jira. I used this example of building an online food delivery service using a portfolio or advanced roadmaps in Jira. And we used this example because it will give you an idea about how companies work and how they can use a tool like Jira to solve their problems. But now they have launched their services, they have launched their uh, mobile apps on Android and iOS. And now it is time to do some marketing. So Maria M has joined Foodie as the marketing head. And she is responsible for running the web and print based campaigns every month. So this is important here because we have to run a campaign uh, every month. And in her team, there is a graphic designer who will be, of course, designing uh, various graphics and images, banners, along with two con content writers who will be, of course, writing the content and reviewing the uh, material. And they also have uh, two web developers who will be actually uh, developing the web pages or landing pages. Now, we talked about running a campaign every month. Now, in the month of June, they have to promote uh, their Android app. Now, when it comes to promoting any uh, service or running any marketing campaign, they will be basically running an online and print based ads along with uh, writing blogs. So this is, of, of course, their main uh, responsibility, uh, running ads, designing content uh, or designing uh, banners, images for uh, these ads, along with, of course, the content uh, and uh, the articles or blogs that they will be writing. In the month of June uh, or in the month of July, they will be promoting their iOS app. In the month of August, they will be running campaigns for promoting uh, their offers. And in September, they will be promoting their point-based uh, system. So this is what they have in their mind and this is basically their timeline or their roadmap for the next uh, few months. Now talking about uh, demonstrations, so today we will be looking at how to log into Jira. Of course, so this is uh, intended for someone who has no idea about how Jira works. And this particular video series, the whole course on Jira core server fundamentals and usage is basically for someone who is new to Jira. And uh, this particular course will give you or give them the foundation or the required knowledge to do wonderful things with Jira in future. Uh, we will take a look at uh, how navigation bar works in Jira. We will also briefly discuss how to find your projects, how to find the, the issues that are relevant to you. Now in Jira issues are basically different activities, although the name issue itself is a bit misleading, but issue is nothing but uh, any kind of activity. Uh, we will also take a look at the user profile and uh, preferences. 
So let us take a look at uh, the uh, Jira interface and uh, then uh, uh, we will uh, discuss what all you can do when you log in to Jira. Now, Maria M has recently joined this uh, company called Foodie. Now, the first thing that she can do is, of course, log in to Jira. Now, we will be using this uh, web based uh, interface where there is a unique uh, URL. So, let us say if you are running Jira on your server, uh, your Jira administrators will give you a link, uh, you are, uh, a kind of a web link that you can use to work on Jira. And uh, when you open that particular link, you will be presented with this uh, interface where, where on top you can see uh, something like this, a dashboard, and you will have uh, maybe on the top right corner a link to login, but usually you will have this login page where you can enter your username and password. Now this username and password can be uh, given to you by your administrator or if you are already part of, let us say, uh, your company's uh, Active Directory, your company's LDAP, you might not even have to enter the username and password. So Jira can actually uh, help you uh, or rather it will let you log in without entering password if the single sign on is enabled. But in most cases, you will get some in some kind of instructions from your administrator whether you need to enter your LDAP credentials or whether uh, the username and password uh, will be given to you by your administrator. So once you log into Jira, you will be presented with uh, something like this, which is usually your system dashboard. Now system dashboard is uh, a dashboard which is common for uh, everyone. It is like your default dashboard. Now usually on your system dashboard, you will have this uh, uh, introduction section, you will have this uh, box here that will say assigned to me and you will have at least your company or your Jira's activity stream. Now these boxes that you see here, these are nothing but uh, different gadgets and uh, these gadgets are presented on the dashboard. As any Jira user, as a, as a Jira user, you can always create your own dashboard. So you are not really limited to the system dashboard. You can always create your own dashboard if you want. And uh, you can also look for any other dashboards created by other users in your company. It depends whether the dashboard is uh, public or uh, shared with you or your group or not. Now we will come back to dashboard and uh, we will learn how to build our own dashboard in uh, future videos. Uh, but on top you can see this uh, navigation bar. Now this navigation bar is basically uh, a place where you can find uh, all the relevant sections uh, relevant to you of course. So the first one is of course the uh, uh, option to find all the dashboards. So you can take a look at the dashboards. Uh, and even, even before that, if you click on the uh, the first icon here, which is nothing but your application navigator. So if your Jira has the link has links to other Atlassian tools like Confluence or maybe Bitbucket or maybe uh, a link to your company's website, so any link that your Jira administrator has created, you can actually uh, Take a look at those links. You can uh, click on those links if you want. Then you have your uh, Jira logo or it could be your company's logo. It depends, of course, how your uh, Jira administrator has configured it. So you always have the option to change the logo. But of course, this is the admin part. We are not really doing any Jira administration in this particular video series. Then you have the option to uh, take a look at your dashboard. Then you also have the option to take a look at all the projects. Now, we discussed in the previous video that Jira comes in three different flavors. So you have Jira software, you have Jira service desk, and of course you have Jira core for business based projects. So in this particular video series, we are focused on uh, business based projects. And if you want to take a look at all the projects that you have, you can always click on this link called view all projects. And depending upon your permission, depending upon your access level, you will be able to take a look at the projects in your uh, Jira instance. However, you can also filter these projects based on the project type. So if you just want to focus on Jira core projects, you can click on business. If you want to take a look at Jira service test projects, you can take, you can click on this link 
uh, this category on the not not a category but a project type called service desk or if you want to focus on uh, software then you can just click on software so these uh, options on on the left hand side will help you in the navigation then you have the categories categories are nothing but a way to categorize your projects so if you want to take a look at all the foodie based projects in uh, our uh, jira instance you can click on foodie and now you can see all the projects that are uh, relevant for foodie uh, so we might have to ask uh, or maria uh, will have to ask the jira administrator for a new project for managing the marketing campaign so we will we'll be doing that in uh, in uh, next uh, set of videos then you will be able to take a look at the issues so we will come back to the issues later on in this particular video series and we'll discuss it in uh, great uh, detail but just to give you a quick idea a quick summary about what this can do so issues as i mentioned before is uh, a way to uh, track your activity so any activity like uh, maybe a task or a to-do item or a bug or a defect or maybe a story if you're talking about uh, development task these are all issues and uh, different type of issues are managed by creating different issue types so, and that is of course managed by your jira administrator but uh, we can always uh, uh, see those issue types and uh, if you want to perform a search based on uh, these different issue types or maybe you want to perform a search based on various projects you can always go to this uh, uh, option called issues and search for the issues and uh, uh, of course right now we are looking at a different uh, or rather i should say all the issues in our jira instance but we can also always filter based on uh, maybe uh, a specific project or maybe a type of project a status or maybe you want to focus on all, all the issues assigned to you so we'll 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 discuss it in uh, in details later on so to create any issue you need to click on a button called create and uh, it will give you a form or a screen called as create issue screen we'll discuss it uh, again later on but basically this is the place where you can uh, start reporting issues or you can start creating activities in uh, your project or any project that you have access to so so eventually we'll have uh, we'll ask our jira administrators to create a project for marketing and then we'll create uh, marketing campaigns in uh, the in, in the project called maybe foodie marketing so I'll leave this for uh, the future videos. Uh, let us continue further. You also have the option to perform a search. Let us say if you want to perform a search based on a specific keyword, you can type here your keyword like foodie, or maybe let let me type something something that I can find. So if I type test, so it will perform a search on uh, your Jira instance, and it will look for all the keywords in the issues where you have the keyword called test. Uh, then finally you have the option to take a look at the profile so this is important if you are new to jira you can do changes to your profile if you want and uh, it will also give you some flexibility when it comes to how you will be interacting with jira for example uh, you can change your your icon your avatar if you want if you click on it you can select a different image uh, if, if you don't like this one uh, you can also do some changes to your profile like you can change your full name uh, or email address and of course the password it, it, it really depends uh, how your jira is configured right now if your jira is configured uh, or it is using your ldap or active directory credentials then of course you have to do it uh, in a different tool but if your jira credentials are stored within jira in the internal directory then you can of course make a change here if you want then you have the option to take a look at your last login uh, and you also have some preferences for example these preferences will really help you in improving your uh, your interaction with jira for example if you're looking at list of issues when you search when you perform a search you are presented with maximum 50 but uh, you can change it if you want your email type will be html you can change your language you can change your time zone if you want and uh, uh, you also have some other options like you know default options to share your filters and dashboards your your keyboard shortcuts are enabled or not uh, whether you want to auto watch an issue if you let us say comment on uh, any issue uh, we'll, we'll don't get confused right now we'll of course discuss it uh, uh, in uh, great details later on 
but these options are really uh, there for you to basically change these options if you are not happy with let us say the the 50 page size or maybe you just want to prefer text based emails so do take a look at these options and one thing which i want to mention is that in jira whenever you make a change to let us say an issue you will not be notified if you were if you uh, made that particular change so there is an option called my changes do not notify me but you can change it so let us say if you change it to notify me then any change happen to an issue where you're you're involved you will get notifications which can be a bit too much but you can always you know uh, leave it as do not notify me so uh, we will of course uh, learn a lot about uh, jira uh, project jira issues how to do these things in uh, our future videos but in the next video we will uh, spend some time looking at how to work on uh, a project so i hope you are enjoying this uh, new video series on uh, jira core server fundamentals and usage and uh, as i mentioned before the whole purpose of this uh, particular video series is uh, to help new users new uh, jira administrators who want to learn jira administration but they first first want to build a solid foundation on how jira works and i think learning jira core is the best way to uh, basically learn uh, what is Jira and how you can use it and what all it can do for you. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.